Well, based off of this chart, you guys can see today is not a great day for the stock market and there is a couple reasons for that but we also do have big data that comes out tomorrow you do have big boy old fed jerome powell that speaks tomorrow as well some things we do need to acknowledge here in this video so let's dive straight into it i don't want to waste any of your time hit that like button subscribe to the channel source your comments questions or concerns down below in the comment section as well if you guys want to come trade with me live in real time link down below in the pink comment but let's dive straight into all of this info so first things first if you guys are unaware of what is causing today's down move directly data related you did have the richmond fed survey fell negative 19 percent in june and essentially what this is it is the federal reserve manufacturing survey manufacturing recession kind of sound like two peas in a pod well for shipments you've seen a negative 29 percent print versus negative 14 percent prior so that is worse month over month capacity utilization a little bit better month over month negative nine percent versus a negative 11 percent print for the prior month and the volume of new orders i think this is something that is really clapping the markets this and shipments negative 38 from a negative 16 prior so you're not seeing a volume of new orders coming in good at all or these shipments not coming in good at all so this is not a good sign for a recession you can also see that kathy wood says the u.s is already in a recession and this is the main headline here on cnbc and you are seeing people talking about a recession of which the likes you have not seen in many, many years. You have to go back to, you know, COVID crash in 2020, and that was a very brief period in time to get these kind of fears about a recession. And I think it's clear, we are already in a recession, and we do have data that comes out tomorrow, which could make people a little bit more fearful than not. So for Q1 GDP, the final number, it does come out tomorrow and you can see it's estimated to come in at the same it came in for the last estimate which was negative 1.5 percent so depending on what happens tomorrow you could see people get a little bit more fearful about a potential recession but we already know a negative 1.5 percent number is what is expected so i don't think anything too crazy will come out of that but you do have fed jerome powell that does speak tomorrow at 8 30 in the morning i believe this is central time so it should be 9 a.m eastern standard time and that will move the markets in a bigger way than not and i'm sure the fed comes out and says yeah you know the same thing he's been saying essentially he's going to raise rates to oblivion as long as inflation is high no matter what happens and given the gdp final numbers that come out for q1 tomorrow given fed jerome powell if he keeps saying those statements that he's not going to slow down until inflation comes down then that could mean for a pretty substantial red day tomorrow. And I think that's why you're seeing such a red day here today. It's a lot of this anticipation for the Fed, for this GDP final result that comes out that is having a lot of people just selling off stocks here today instead of waiting for bad news tomorrow, which could mean a bounce for tomorrow, or it could mean more substantial pain to come. If we look at the S&P on the 30 minute or the 15 minute candlestick chart you guys can see that we have had a pretty decent move from the bottom as of so far from 362 all the way up to 393 that is a move of roughly eight and a half percent so we have given back about 1.43 percent as of today and today in pre-market or just when we started trading the first 10 15 minutes of the trading day we actually did hit the high of where you can see of these recent highs and you have been selling it off throughout the whole entire day it has been just one straight move to the downside ever since this richmond fed manufacturing survey did come out as well as you did get the smp case schiller home price index and this is the main headline for that it says home prices increased slowed in april for the first time in months smp case schiller shows 
Prices rose 20.4% nationally in April compared with the same month ago, period, according to the S&P CoreLogic Case Schiller index in march home prices grew 20.6 percent the last slight deceleration was in november of last year excuse me in a change from the last five months when most of the 20 cities saw month to month price gains only nine cities saw prices rise faster in april than they had done in march so not a lot of cities are still appreciating value as far as home prices are concerned good thing is a lot of people have equity built into their homes so if they need to sell for whatever reason a lot of people are not gonna you know have to sell for less than what they bought their homes for this is actually the most equity in homes people have had since 2011 so you're definitely uh, positive in that regard but still when your largest sector of your economy which is housing starts to show signs of in increasing weakness that's not going to be good for the odds of recession that's not going to be good for the average person and that is not going to be translated into a good thing for the stock market now that's really it that's what is happening for the day and i think a lot of people are just selling off stocks like i said in anticipation for tomorrow and you do have the fed like i said gdp data that does come out the uh pce prices quarter over quarter for final q1 as well a lot of this finalized data that is coming out tomorrow and then on Thursday, you have more relevant data, which is personal income month over month, personal spending month over month, initial jobless claims for this last week, PCE price index month over month and year over year. That's the main metric of inflation the Fed likes to pay attention to. So that will be important for obvious reasons. Personal income important personal spending much more important in my personal opinion and that is really it for thursday as far as friday you have ism manufacturing pmi now you really don't have any other fed speakers as well besides fed jerome powell tomorrow and i think that's why he will hold so much weight to the markets and he will really dictate which way the markets do move now the biggest thing we will have to contend with next as far as this whole market crash scenario is earnings and earnings are going to start coming out here very shortly in the next couple of weeks if your largest companies in the world really butcher earnings that control the markets your apples your microsoft's your amazon's your google's even your tesla's of the stock market your trillion dollar market cap companies that's where you can really see a big flush out to the downside because a lot of those companies have held up relatively well compared to other companies that are at their covid crash lows guys this is the worst stock market by far you will probably ever experience and some of the best performing stocks, I know that's really relative here because pretty much everything besides energy and some healthcare stocks are down on the year quite substantially. Even some of those names I just mentioned down over 20% still performing relatively well compared to the markets. Once those guys go, that's it. That's the flush out. That's where, excuse my, my French that's where shit hits the fan and that's where you get an earnings recession as well as a recession on paper coming as early as july 28th so be prepared for this it looks like the fed might crash the markets again tomorrow it looks like marco kalanovic from jp morgan he expected a seven percent rally this week it looks like that's probably not going to happen if i were to put on my wizard cap here and try to see into the future now before we go ahead and wrap up this video the last thing that i want to talk about is the fact that the margin debt is so high so once we come down to earnings once we get this recession on paper once markets realize the fed will raise rates during a recession and do quantitative tightening really not slow anything down that's when the markets flush out in a big way and the margin debt is definitely going to help us overshoot to the downside potentially even going in between that covid crash high and potentially the covid crash low could put us in between 330 on the s p and 300 on the s p that's really the bottom end range that i'm targeting to flush out hit that level and then hit a bottom and we can slowly start to make our way back to the upside from that point but the margin debt has only decreased about 70 
six billion dollars so far for 2022 from january until may that's only a reduction of about 15 percent compare that with the nasdaq currently being down about 29 percent in the first six months of 2022 that is the year to date down percentage 29 is just it's, it's wild to say out loud guys but we are down almost 29 percent um for 2022 and if we get another five to ten percent down move from here you're going to start to see margin calls to the extent you have not seen in a very long time if ever in your investment lifetime so that is going to be all for this video do me a quick favor hit that like button subscribe to the channel it immensely helps out the youtube algorithm to push this video to as many people as possible so hopefully this information can help them also profit and turn their portfolios around in due time because this is one of if not the best buying opportunities that you will see uh for years and years into the future so take full advantage of it thank you guys for watching I will see you in the next one.